What's up dog? Are you on a business trip or something? Yeah. Heading over to the Lit Conference in London. You? No way. Me too. Anyway, I'm Jadarius Quadarius IV. I'm presenting about English Romanticism at the conference. No way man. Me too. I'm originally out of Prague Lick, Arkansas. Shall we talk about the conference? No way man. I'm from there too. Dad? Son? So anyway, tell me a little bit about your research. Anything noteworthy? My topic is about romantic poetry. Usually, such poetry emphasizes individualism, reverence for the natural world, and the supernatural. Supernatural? What is supernatural? You mean supernatural? Yeah, that. You fool. You're wrong. You just lost credibility. Fine, you got me. I didn't do my research this time, but I did read a lot of poetry by William Wordsworth. He really focused on humanity's inherent connection with the outside world. You should read his poem My Heart Leaps Up. Wordsworth? What is Wordsworth? You mean William Wordsworth? Erg Huron to me man. You fool. You're wrong. You just lost credibility. Have you read anything by Keats, Coleridge, or Lord Byron? All excellent English romantic poets, I tell you. Ah, uh, yes. The Great Coats. Cowbridge, and Lord Tyson. Wasn't Tyson the guy who made the chicken nuggets? When we get to the conference, I am going to help you with finalizing your papers. They seem a little bit... A little bit what? A little bit um. Yeah? Well, they are kind of. And a little bit. And lastly, a bit. Fine, I agree. I really want to know more about romantic prose. That's my specialty, no way. That's my topic, dog. Well, for starters, romantic prose was revolutionary for its time. Consider that it came after the orderly and structured age of enlightenment. Everything in the age of romanticism was based on passionate descriptions of emotions and imagination. So it's true what they say. Romanticism was all about love not just love. Romantic authors, such as Mary Shelley and Jane Austen, covered the whole spectrum of human emotion. In fact, almost all of the authors in my research discussed the romantic themes of nature, the supernatural, and individualism. Ha! Huh. So I was right about the supernatural. You fool. You're wrong. You just lost credibility. Anyway, why are they even playing French music? We're not even in France. I'll see you at the conference. Look for my presentation about the theme of societal pressure and the role of the individual in Shelley's Frankenstein. Yo girl, what's happening? Nothing much. Can't complain. I'm super excited about that lit conference coming up though. Yeah, I heard it was gonna be great. You're not excited? There's going to be an entire presentation on romantic art and architecture. Didn't you hear? I mean duh. Who didn't hear? I love learning about all of the art and stuff. Well fine. At least you can teach me about romantic art. Why? I'd be glad to. It all started in the early to mid 1800s. Romantic artists were starting to reject the straight, orderly fashion of their enlightenment counterparts. The new focus was on evoking emotion, showing beauty of the earth, and nostalgia. So basically the movement was like a daytime TV soap opera? No, silly. It was a huge artistic revival. Most of our modern works would be very different if it were not for key artists like Constable and Turner. I think I get it. By any chance, did architecture change too? Something was bound to change with such a drastic change in art form. Why? You're absolutely right. This was the age of Gothic revival. Many buildings of stone and dark brick were built, meant to reflect the darkness and dual nature of the human soul itself. 
for the first time. Humans are painting a picture of what was truly inside of them. Hey, looks like we make quite the team, huh? For sure. There's only one thing I don't understand though. Why did a plane that just landed here in London from Froglick leave for Paris five minutes ago without anyone leaving the plane? So are you like totally as pumped as I am for this lit conference? I mean I think I have almost every piece of the puzzle. All I need is some information about historical and societal events of romanticism and I'll be golden. The name Squad Arius. Jad Darius Squad Arius. Jad Darius Squad Arius IV. Look buddy, I don't know anything about any lit conference. I have to get back to my job at the Louvre soon. Ah, yes. The Great Louvre. A landmark known to every Londoner on the wonderful east side. Say, tell you what. You work at the Louvre, right? The museum? Could you tell me a little bit about history and society of the English Romantic period? I really want to impress my research rival. I guess so. Come with me. I'll take you to my office. Welcome to the Louvre Cafe. I can tell you all about English Romantic history and society here. Are you ready? I was born ready. Can't argue with that. Well, we should start with the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century. English Romanticism came about as a response to this movement which aimed to rationalize natural events with science. What's ironic, you ask? The technological advancements of the IR helped these exact romantic ideas spread faster. Interesting. Is this related to the Age of Enlightenment I always hear about? Precisely. Enlightenment thinkers in England and elsewhere pushed for a rational, scientific approach to view the world. The Romantics, on the other hand, began to realize that human nature was much more complex than what was in the science books and imperialism manuals. Imperialism manuals? You say? What do you mean? It's just an expression. While these changes in philosophy were happening in Europe, England maintained its vast empire. This produced a content population and a very profitable empire economy. And that's what produced such romantic thought. I get it now. Anything on the combat scene during English Romanticism? Napoleon was a prominent force, correct? Yes and no. While Napoleon did command his La Grande Army in Europe, England stayed mostly unaffected. However, England did lose the American colonies during this time. This ushered in a time of independent thought. One major advancement was democratization. The common man now had a say in English politics. I should really be writing all of this down. Thank you so much for your help and for the delicious espresso. Anything else that may help me understand romanticism? No problem. One more thing though. The decline of the Anglican Church brought about a new theme of human equality. Everyone was entitled to their own thought. Also, mass groups of people relocated from the urban cityscape to more rural areas. This started the literary trend of the human longing for a life in nature. Thank you, Linda. I best be on my way back to the conference. Listen Jadarius. There's something wrong with this conference. For one thing, everyone in the hotel lobby was speaking to me in French. Second of all, the lobby guy may or may not have kissed me on the cheek. Also he may or may not have thrown a baguette at me. Are you sure? Everything looked fine to me. Linda took me on a tour of the Louvre. I drank a delicious espresso and learned all about romantic history and society. The Louvre? You went to the Louvre? The Louvre is in France. Look at this conference room. Look at it. There's nobody here. Oh. I may see the problem now, you fool. You're wrong. You just lost credibility. Well at least we learned one thing. English Romanticism was a revolutionary time period that brought in the new age of emotional thought, visionaries, and creative ideas. Oh please, Jadarius. You don't even know a word smart from a word's worth. Come on. I'll buy you an espresso.